Welcome to Employee Training on Diversity and Inclusion. Through this presentation, we want to provide a clear understanding of what diversity is and isn't, and we also want to raise a greater awareness and sensitivity to diversity issues that go well beyond the assumed categories. According to the American Society for Training and Development, diversity is the mosaic of people who bring a variety of backgrounds, styles, perspectives, values, and experiences as assets to the groups and organizations with which they interact. For more than 25 years, Dr. R. Roosevelt Thomas, Jr. has been at the forefront of developing and implementing innovative concepts and strategies for maximizing organizational and individual potential through diversity management. According to Dr. Thomas, diversity is any collective mixture characterized by differences, similarities, and related tensions and complexities. Diversity goes far beyond race and gender. Diversity also encompasses the valuable perspectives that can come from different experiences and skill levels, religions, cultures, age groups, physical capabilities, and groups of people not previously considered. Workplace diversity means that here in Leander ISD, we are enabling every member of our workforce to perform to his or her potential. Simply, diversity is all the ways we are alike and all the ways we are different. We have both primary and secondary dimensions of diversity. Primary dimensions of diversity are characteristics that everyone is born with and that are visible and easy to identify, such as race and ethnicity, whereas external dimensions of diversity are differences or characteristics that we acquire, change, or discard throughout our lives, and that it distinguish us from people who possess a different worldview. Examples of secondary dimensions are religion, educational background, marital status, and personal values. Each of us communicates in a manner where it is filtered through our cultural perspective, which comes from both the primary and secondary dimensions of diversity. Again, as you can see, we have many filters such as age, gender, geographic location, languages used, religion, and etc. Because of the many factors involved to develop our cultural perspective, the metaphor for the American culture has evolved from the melting pot to a salad. A salad is made up of various ingredients and each has a different flavor, but we can easily see and taste the individual parts. The parts exist together, contributing to the success of the salad, yet each part is very different. Just as members of various cultural groups may not want to be assimilated, they want their tastes, looks, and texture to remain whole. Therefore, we must use inclusive work practices. What if you only bring part of yourself to work and leave your nose at home? With this important part of you missing, what will happen? You won't be able to be your best. The same thing happens at work when you are unable to bring your full self to work. You are unable to function in the most productive manner. We must promote an environment that is comfortable, trusting, and one where each employee can feel comfortable contributing. Diversity and inclusion at work is about unleashing the immeasurable power in our relationships and interactions, where our differences and our similarities exist. One of the great misperceptions regarding diversity and inclusion in the workplace is that it is about how to interact better with or make things better for women, people of color, or other minority groups. But really, diversity and inclusion is about making things better for everyone. Diversity and inclusion benefits everyone. The definition of inclusion is the process of involving and valuing all people in an environment regardless of their differences. You play an important part ensuring inclusion continues to be a part of the LISD culture. 
Cultural competence is the ability to respond effectively and appropriately to different cultural and generational perspectives in the workplace. Here in Leander ISD, we are also guided by the 10 ethical principles. A few of the ways you can put this into action is to respect others' opinions, be open to learning about other cultures and ideas, give others the benefit of the doubt in a dispute, and seek first to understand. Each generation has its own distinct set of values that are developed from the social environment in their early years. Different generations have different values and beliefs regarding family, career, the work-life balance, training and development, loyalty, gender roles, the work environment, and expectations of leaders. Demographers have named the different generations today as veterans, baby boomers, Generation X, Generation Y, and Generation Z. At LISD, we have all of these generations working together, which causes cultural differences. Here are some things you can do. Be open about differences. Don't make assumptions. Encourage questions. Establish and maintain friendships with people different from you. Don't tell ethnic or sexual jokes. And most of all, be honest about your feelings. Irrational assumptions, misunderstandings, prejudices, and fear can all be barriers to cross-cultural communication. The next few slides will address these areas. To overcome irrational assumptions, you need to empower your thinking. Learn something about yourself the other person, and the situation. You may discover hidden strengths, feelings, and insights. Other things you can do include re-examining your assumptions, being sensitive to differences, and considering other viewpoints. If you find yourself in a misunderstanding, keep these three tips in mind. Number one, apologies are always appropriate but be mindful of your timing, framing, and style of delivery. Don't allow emotions to be the message. Use your words to correct misunderstandings and seek confirmation that your apology was heard correctly. Number two, if you cause an unfortunate or difficult situation for a coworker or supervisor, intentionally or not, correct it quickly and in person. There is no time to rely on email or other electronic communication. Use the phone only when an in-person delivery is not possible. Number three, if you realize your blunder while your words are leaving your mouth, apologize immediately. Take the responsibility and do the right thing without adding dramatics. A heartfelt I apologize. That comment was uncalled for. will go a long way in mending a regrettable comment. By definition, prejudice, or unconscious bias, is making a judgment or assumption about someone or something before having enough knowledge to be able to do so with guaranteed accuracy, or judging a book by its cover. This can be hurtful and cause problems, especially in the workplace. Prejudice cannot be combated with anger, but through education and understanding. You can turn fear into positive energy by choosing to do so. When everything around you changes, throw away your doubts and insecurities and do the following. Number one, be strong in your convictions. Number two, be confident in your abilities. Number three, be proud of the work that you do. These three things will allow you to turn the energy that fear can create into more positive energy. The number one rule for diversity, inclusion, and constructive conflict management is dialogue. Dialogue in order to understand the other's point of view, seeking first to understand. Dialogue in order to communicate your own position. Dialogue in order to arrive at a mutually beneficial agreement that serves common goals. 
You can promote diversity by working cooperatively toward a common goal, recognizing and respecting others and their individuality, as well as thinking before you speak and being sensitive to others. You should be talking about your differences and asking tactful questions about how people want to be treated. Most of all, you should eliminate stereotypes and generalizations. With regard to the acronym FAIR, the F for feedback is intended to indicate the idea that it is just as important to hear or listen to others as it is to be heard. Actually, this is the hallmark of what communication does at its best, namely, allows everyone to be heard. The A for assistance is simply intended to convey the idea that it is vital that we support each other. The I for inclusion emphasizes the idea that to make the workplace the best it can be, it is imperative that every employee feel a genuine sense of belonging here at LISD. Finally, the R is for respect, which as a subjective term requires that each individual's perception of what it means to be respectful be taken into account. Let's celebrate diversity at LISD by taking pride in our own uniqueness, welcoming others as individuals with special qualities, and enjoying our similarities and differences. Always keep in mind, when we feel a sense of belonging, it is not because we are the same as everyone else, but because we have been accepted as we are. We appreciate your time and attention. Thank you.